our 2014 Super Street Fighter Smackdown. Basically, this is the prequel to single combat with the all reigning Aprilia Tuono, who's been at the top of the heap when it comes to these, you know, leader plus naked bikes for the last few years. So for this year, we've got some new members of the group. And Kevin, maybe you could uh, tell us a little bit about them. Yeah, we got some new bikes, of course. And on either end, we got some returning Mo uh, contributors. John Burns over here, and on that end, Sean Alexander, who's a former editor, both of them. And so we're proud to have them back and proud to have some great new bikes here. Monster 1200S from Ducati. It's not the Street Fighter, they don't make a big one anymore. It's Super Duke, I gotta like that one because, well, it's the name, right? And uh, the BMW S1000R, which is uh, based on the old all conquering S1000RR from BMW. That's got dynamic uh, damping control, semi-active suspension. On Sean's end over there, Z1000 upgraded for this year. It's always been a, a fun, relatively affordable street fighter, and now it's been upgraded. MV Agusta 1090 RR, that's, uh, that's like we tested last year for 2014. It comes with ABS, and it'd be the priciest one of the group at $19,000, but it's still, uh, well, it's, it's the best looking bike of the bunch. We've had them here at Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, riding these street bikes at a racetrack and we're passing some guys on the full-on sport bikes because that's how much potential is in here. So yeah, what we found I think initially, which you know, kind of kind of cuts it a little black and white between the five bikes is we have two bikes here that make really good naked street bikes. And then we have three bikes here that, I mean, you could put a full fairing on them and take, you know, clip-ons and you would have, you know, repla races. And those three bikes would be the KTM, the BMW, and the MV. Uh, the two more streetable bikes, of course, being the Ducati and the Kawasaki. So we're going to follow this up with a street test. Now, that's not to say that, you know, those guys are already proclaimed winners of that part of it, but, you know, they do have a little bit more leaning that way. How do you think, Evans, as far as riding these bikes today, is, you know, from the Cowie and the Ducati compared to these other three? Well, when I was looking at the specs and just standing over in our staging area before we got on the bikes, I was thinking, wow, these, these other bikes just don't have the same ground clearance. There's no way they can be as much fun on the track and I was wrong I mean yeah they, they are limited by their ground plans but they have other abilities that make them a hoot both of these bikes have amazing engines I mean the Ducati you exit the corner in the mid-range power and it just goes I mean I was laughing inside my helmet when Burns was riding in front of me leaving a big fat darkie out of the corner um, and this bike it just amazed me its engine I, I had no idea that it had had the poop that it does to get it down the track thankfully it's got really great brakes too so um, they are hampered a little bit by ground clearance but uh i was shocked how great they were and i think uh also some really big differences that are key into how these bikes maybe go so much faster than some of the other ones are going to be technology yeah the ktm uh it's got the biggest motor of the bunch so it puts out power and it's got a good trash control system because we melted this back tire out here on the track today and we really needed it and uh, the bmw too technology the only one here with a semi-active suspension dynamic damping control it comes on the premium package equipped uh, s1000 the options list is kind of uh, complicated but yeah it's uh it was fantastic for the heavier guys we put it on hard and that was the end of the setup and then i got on it and i'm like no this is too hard press the button put it on normal and it was perfect for my weight it's really fantastic how you're not doing uh, a screwdriver down on your knees again so, Sean, what are your insights on these five motorcycles? The, the interesting thing is that the ground clearance and the foot positioning on the Ducati and the ground clearance on the Kawasaki, uh, they really limit your lap times out here. And we weren't going for outright lap times today, but just trying to keep up with the other three bikes is just, it was constant either toe scraping or you just couldn't move your foot on the Ducati or pipe and side stand scraping on the Kawasaki because it's just the ground clearance. And the, the, the interesting thing about that is both bikes clearly had a lot more to deliver. I think this, the shocking thing is, is you got three super bikes here without fairings and you got two street bikes, but when it came time for the straightaways, no bike really could pull any other bike because the mid-range uh, power of the Ducati and the Kawasaki and their tractability off the corner meant you had a jump on the faster bikes, so at the end of the straightaway, they start to pull a little bit, but you're right there in the braking zone anyway. Well, you're talking about uh, you know ground clearance with the Cowie and the Ducati. The crazy thing is, you know, as you know, say two of the taller people or three here, 
uh, there is more room and leg room to be comfortable on this KTM, but yet it still has tons of cornering clearance. You know, after this whole day of riding, jump on, take home in comfort, you know, you'd be fine. Yeah, we've got to say, I mean, this uh, BMW engine, the detuned a little bit more torque than the S1000 RR fully fared bike. Oh my God. You know, this thing has, we we're talking about space on the KTM. The space on this thing, it's got huge fore and aft room coming out onto the back straight. Every time I'd hit it, it'd like, you know, just suck my butt back because there was just so much room. You know, I was a little bit more held in on the KTM, but my God, this thing's just a rocket. And th that's one of the cool things. People, when they first got announced, it's like, oh, detuned. And it's like, oh, it's gonna, you know, suck somehow. And here we are at a racetrack and it doesn't feel slow at all. Ouch. So that's an impressive machine because it just pulls like crazy and yet you're in relative comfort. I, I could, I would ride that home right now. Well, actually, uh, John, you rode out today and you are riding back tonight. What's uh, your bike of choice for going home on? I was pretty amazed at all five of the bikes out here today, really. Um, but uh, I think when it's time to go home tonight in a couple hours, I think I'm going to want to get on the KTM. It's like the, the, the KTM didn't just go around the track better than the other ones for, for me, but it, I think it's going to be, be a little bit more comfortable too, because it feels like it's got a little more travel at both ends, and it was never really mushy, but I think it'll be a little bit more comfortable. The bar, the handle, the grips are a little bit higher. The uh, seat feels a little cushier. It's got heated grips too. So with these bikes being designed for the street, really, we recognize that not a lot of you are probably going to take them to the track. But if you were to, this $19,000 MV Agusta, it's, other than its looks, it's not all that different from the Kawasaki Z1000, which is $12,000. You put a set of rear sets and a pipe on that thing, I bet you could go pretty much the same pace you could on this brilliant looking MV. So, as an, if you're a street rider and you're never gonna take them to a track, you're gonna have to stay tuned for the street portion of this. But on the racetrack, uh, they're all pretty close, but the ones that are the slowest because of ground clearance issues, that can be remedied and not be too far away from the fastest one. The Kawasaki's got a pretty wide crankcase on it, and uh, it's going to run out of ground clearance again once you clean up the current ground clearance problems. It'll be a, a ton better, but you're going to get into some inherent design things, and I think the MV as a track chassis is always going to have the legs on the Kawasaki. Um, on the street, Kawasaki's a lot less expensive, a lot more comfortable, and boy, does it have a motor. So, it's a tough one. So, yeah, Sean, you bring up a good point. You know, we do have a large disparity in price here. We've got $12,000 on the low end for the Kawasaki, up to $19,000 for the MV for the 2014 model with ABS. Um, you know, from there, you know, $17,000 on the KTM, 16 on the Ducati Monster, and stock form 13150 and then you go up to the standard model that brings it up standard. to the standard model which has you know the the good tc uh ride you know modes. ride modes uh, ride modes pro i think it is yeah. what it is Gear uh, shift assistant. and then if you want to go up to dynamic suspension and heated grips uh $15,000 so at $15,000 for this bmw it's a thousand dollars less than the ducati two thousand dollars less than this and four thousand less than the mv so the the thing is, is this bike is the least expensive and this is not the street portion it definitely is not a competitor with that mv on the racetrack today if you're looking for a new motorcycle and don't have fifteen thousand dollars to spend this isn't a bad idea now we should say that you know out of these bikes i mean yeah we've got you know uh four new ones and then we've got the 1090 the brutality that's actually been around for you know a few years and that bike even though it's been here for a few years held its own against these brand new models without problem i mean that thing goes around this track and rails yeah i think we should maybe throw a, a thanks out to the guys at moto forza who hosted this track day and came over and found out that the suspension settings on the Brutale were pretty effed up to begin with because when I took it out the second time, yeah, it was like a whole new motorcycle after that. I mean, Sean, you were going even faster on it then and I felt more comfortable and it was just a fantastic machine without any cornering problems whatsoever. Yeah, no cornering clearance problems and the, the, the chassis feels like a race bike chassis. The, like Sean says, the harder you ride it, the happier it is. All right, to figure out the end of this, we gotta go to our scorecard and tabulate the votes and all that stuff. But 
If we had to do another track day right now, guys, which bike would you choose? One more track day. How the hell was it? Ah! Yeah. Mine. 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 Mine.